Let's get right into it. Yesterday, I tweeted out six MMTLP scenarios that could unfold this week. All of these scenarios are purely speculation and not fact. Like all other investors, I am waiting on the MMAT CEOs and legal team to release a statement. I am of the opinion that the CEOs have not yet released any statement because they were likely advised to not say anything until the legal team read and reviewed everything. Any misstatement could be used by FINRA or DTCC or OTC or the SEC to launch an investigation into allegations that this squeeze was orchestrated or influenced by the CEOs. I am confident that a statement will be released at the right time. Over the past two years of this TRCH and MMTLP drama, I believe the CEO, George Palacaras, has been right all along in FINRA's halting of MMTLP on Friday, December 9, 2022 is strong evidence that the alleged illegal price suppression tactics of naked shorting have indeed been used on TRCH, then on MMAT after the merger, and then on MMTLP since it converted from TRCH on October 6, 2021 without any notice given to the CEOs or investors. I always save my investment history. I have specifically been saving all my MMAT and TRCH and MMTLP transactions by doing screenshots or going into my accounts transaction history tab and downloading all my transactions for each year. I also save all conversations I have had with my brokerage's customer service. This is evidence supporting my defense of legally purchased shares for which I am entitled to receive payment and have been allowed to purchase by my brokerage. I personally received the vast majority of my TRCH, also known as MMTLP shares, from when TRCH merged with MMAT in 2020. However, I have not registered a single MMTLP share, but may decide to register a portion on the record date of Monday, December 12, 2022 after talking to my brokerage on Monday morning. Based on the S-1 form, investors holding unregistered MMTLP shares are encouraged to notify their brokers or banks to register the shares with American Stock Transfer and Trust Company LLC, AST, agents so your shares are accounted for in their book entry and because the next bridge hydrocarbon company is an independent public reporting company which is not eligible for electronic transfer through the depository trust company book entry system or any other established clearing corporation. Please read pages 26 to 27 of Prospectus 424-B-4, filed on November 25, 2022 in the amended S-1 form filed on November 9, 2022. These forms are found on the Securities and Exchange Commission website. The link is in the description box of this video. On pages 26 and 27, there is an explanation for investors that hold MMTLP shares through a street name or beneficial stockholders. The paragraph further states that most Meta stockholders own their shares of Series A preferred stock beneficially through a bank, broker, or other nominee. On or prior to the record date, these stockholders are encouraged to contact their bank, broker, or other nominee to transfer the shares of Series A preferred stock to their AST transfer agent such that each holder is the registered holder in book entry form with their new transfer agent. This is encouraged but not mandatory. No approval of any holders of Meta's capital stock is required for the spin-off. We are not asking you for a proxy and request that you not send us a proxy. We are also not asking you to make any payment or surrender or exchange any of your shares of Meta Series A preferred stock for shares of our common stock. As of the distribution date, all of the shares of Series A preferred stock will be automatically cancelled and the holders of such Series A preferred stock will cease to have any rights with respect to such shares. On page 27 and 28, we find the six conditions of the spin-off. In my opinion, only condition 1 and 4 are relevant to the current MMTLP situation. Condition 1 states, and I quote, the Meta Board of Directors shall have authorized and approved the spin-off and not withdrawn such authorization and approval, and shall have declared the dividend of our common stock to the holders of Meta Series A preferred stock. Condition 4 states, and I quote, no order, injunction or decree issued by any governmental authority of competent jurisdiction or other legal restraint or prohibition preventing consummation of the spin-off shall be in effect, and no other event outside the control of Meta shall have occurred or failed to occur that prevents the consummation of the spin-off. I argue that Condition 1 and 4 have been activated by FINRA's recent actions. Condition 4 is expertly written and squarely in the favor of all MMTLP shareholders, whether you hold registered or unregistered shares. In my opinion, MetaBoard can effectively terminate the spin-off. We need to analyze each sentence and see if the current FINRA situation satisfies each element of Conditions 1 and 4. The first element of Condition 4, we must ask the following questions. 1. Has an order, injunction, or decree been issued? 2. Is FINRA a governmental authority of competent jurisdiction? 3. Or does FINRA come under other legal restraint prohibition? 4. And has FINRA's actions prevented the consummation of the spin-off? FINRA is a government-authorized body that has issued an injunctive order pursuant to Rule 6440-A-3, citing extraordinary event to stop trading of MMTLP across all securities trading platforms. I argue that FINRA's actions have stopped the consummation of the spin-off because they did not allow its trading on December 9th. 
2022 as stipulated by their own revised notice filed on December 8, 2022. We must now see if the second element applies by asking. 1. Did an event outside the control of Meta occur or fail to occur? I argue an event did occur outside the control of Meta. 2. And does this event prevent the consummation of the spin-off? I argue it does because there are not enough next bridge shares for every registered and unregistered MMTLP shareholder. FINRA found more MMTLP shares in the market than the 165 million float. It was outside Meta ability to prevent shorting and trading of the Series A preferred stock. Therefore, the consummation of the spin-off is prevented. Therefore, pursuant to conditions 1 and 4 from page 27 of the S1 form, I argue that an event has occurred outside the control of Meta causing a governmental authority, FINRA, to issue an extraordinary event order pursuant to Rule 6440 to halt trading of MMTLP which prevents the consummation of the spin-off allowing the Meta board to withdraw the authorization and approval of the spin-off. There are several other sections of the S1 application which gives the Meta board flexibility to cancel this spin-off. In my opinion, Meta team lawyers would have laid out all the best options for MMTLP holders, and they are legally obligated to choose the option that is in the best interest of the company and shareholders. If there is no resolution reached in terms of rescheduling the record date, distribution date, and if no other MMTLP shares can even be registered, and if FINRA is unable to allow MMTLP to trade, or allows MMTLP to trade with price restrictions, then I would argue that it is in the best interest of shareholder that the Meta board terminate the spinoff.